Hi everyone, in this video we will be revisiting non-functional requirements that we initially learned about in Chapter 3 this semester. We are looking at them again as a source of determining our architecture design. In the previous video we talked about various setups of hardware and software and client-server architectures and the way that you determine which of those you are going to use largely depends on your system requirements and especially your non-functional requirements. The learning objective for this video is that students should be able to explain how operational, performance, security, cultural, and political requirements affect the architecture design. Often the architecture design is based on the existing infrastructure in the business or rarely the underlying business requirements of the project. For example, if an organization is already running Windows-based applications like in our project, then it might make sense to use Windows-based software in your architecture design. Another example is if your company is already using mobile web apps, then designing a new system to match that setup might be beneficial. If pre-existing architecture or other business requirements of the project don't dictate your architecture design, then no other non-functional requirements will become very important. We'll now review each of the four types of non-functional requirements, but in detail, and even provide subcategories in each of the four main categories. The first type of operational requirement is technical environment, which involves special hardware, software, and network requirements imposed by business requirements. An example of this type of requirement might be all office locations have always-on network connection, permitting a real-time database update. The second type of operational requirement is system integration, which involves the extent to which the system will operate with other systems. An example of this type of requirement might be the system will read and write to the main inventory database. The third is portability, which involves the extent to which the system will need to operate in other environments. An example of this type of requirement could be that a system must operate with mobile devices, both Android and iOS. Finally, maintainability requirements involve expected business changes to which the system should be able to adapt. An example might be our system must accommodate new manufacturing plants. There are three subcategories of performance requirements. The first is speed, which involves the time within the system must perform its function. An example would be, our system should have network transaction response times of four seconds or less. The second category is capacity, which involves the total and peak number of users and the volume of data expected. One example of this type of requirement could be a maximum of 2,000 simultaneous users at peak use times. Finally, availability and reliability, which involves the extent to which the system will be available to the users and the permissible failure rate due to errors. An example of this requirement could be our system should have 99% uptime performance. Next is security. The first category of security is system value estimates, meaning that you should estimate the business value of the system and its data. For example, a complete loss of all of our system data would cost $20 million, is an example of valuing your system. Second is access control, which involves limitations on who can access what data. An example of this type of requirement could be, inventory item changes can be made only by managers for items in their own department. The third category is encryption and authentication, which defines what data will be encrypted where and whether authentication will be needed for user access. An example of this type of requirement could be data will be encrypted from the user's computer to the website to provide secure ordering. Finally, virus control, which involves specific steps to control the potential impact of viruses on the computers. An example of this type of requirement could be all uploaded files will be checked for viruses before being saved in our system. The last major category of non-functional requirements is cultural and political. Multilingual involves the language or languages that the system users will need. For example, our system will operate in English, French, and Spanish. The second category is customization, which involves the specification of what aspects of the system can be changed by local users. For example, Country managers will be able to define new fields in the product database to capture country-specific information. The third category is making unstated norms explicit, meaning that you should explicitly state assumptions that differ 
from country to country or in different cultures. For example, all weights will be stated in pounds and in kilograms. Or, dates will be listed month, day, year, or day, month, year. Unstated norms could also deal with the culture of the organization, not just of the country as a whole. For example, what type of software or hardware is normally used in our organization? Finally, you should consider legal requirements, including the laws and regulations that impose system requirements. An example of this could be, personal customer information cannot be transferred from the European Union countries to the United States. Now that we've thought more carefully about our non-functional requirements, the list can help us make key decisions on which hardware and software to use and how to configure it.